The C standard library has a quick sort function built in. You want to sort an array. All you have to do is call the function, and when the function returns, your array will be sorted. Let's take a look at how to call that function. The QSort function takes four parameters. The first one is the array you want to sort. The second one is the number of elements in the array, and the third parameter is the size of each element. The fourth parameter is a comparison function, and I'll explain that in just a moment. If I have an array of 100 integers that I want to sort, I just call QSort, I pass in the name of the array, the length of the array, which is 100, size of int, which is the size of each box in the array, and then the name of a comparison function. Here I've called it numeric to give me an idea about what it's supposed to do, sort the array numerically. When my function is finished, it'll be sorted from least to greatest. The prototype for the comparison function looks like this. You can change the name of the function, but everything else needs to be the same. The function returns an integer, and it takes in two parameters, which are both void pointers. A void pointer is C's way of saying that this is just the address of something. You see, the quicksort function doesn't know what kinds of things it's sorting. It could be floats, it could be integers, it could be strings. They all have different sizes, but we do know that they have addresses in memory. So by passing in void pointers, we're telling the comparison function that you're just going to receive two addresses. And here they're declared to be constants because we're promising to the compiler that we're not going to modify anything in the array. We're just going to look. So the purpose of the comparison function is to get two elements of the array, compare them to see whether they're in the correct order or not, and then tell the quicksort function whether they need to be swapped or left as is. Think back to the way bubble sort worked. During the bubble sort algorithm, it needs to compare two elements and decide whether they need to be swapped or left as is. In the quicksort algorithm, it might not be comparing two adjacent elements, but it could be looking at two elements that are somewhere in the array. The idea is the same. Do these elements need to be swapped, or can they be left where they are? That's what these A and B are. They are pointers to two elements of the array. One of them we'll call A, the other one we'll call B. So they're coming into our function as void pointers, pointers to something. But we know this is actually an array of integers. The first thing our function needs to do is cast these variables to be integer pointers, because that's what they're actually pointing to. They're actually pointing to integers. In order to be able to compare A and B, we need to compare them as integers. The comparison function needs to return 0 if the two values are equal, a positive number if A is greater than B, and a negative number if B is greater than A. So here's what the comparison function needs to do. It gets two elements. You need to cast them to be the correct type. Then you look at what the first one is pointing to and what the second one is pointing to, and you compare them. If they're equal to each other, you return a 0. If the first one is less than the second one, then you return a negative number and you return a positive number if the opposite case is true. So here's what our function is going to look like. The first thing the function needs to do is cast a and b to be pointers to what they're actually pointing to, in this case, integers. So I've called the variables a, a, and b, b, and they're both integer pointers. Then look at the things that a, a, and b, b are pointing to. If they're equal to each other, I return 0. If the thing that a, a is pointing to is less than the thing that b, b is pointing to, then I return a negative number, and I return a positive number otherwise. So that's my comparison function. And I can actually shorten it a little bit. Since these are numbers, I can just subtract the two values of the numbers. If they're equal to each other, the difference will be 0. And if they're not equal to each other, I'll get either a positive number or a negative number, depending upon which is less or greater than. So here's what that would look like. Just return what a is pointing to minus what b is pointing to. That's a lot simpler, and it accomplishes the same thing. When you're sorting an array of strings, your comparison function needs to use the string functions rather than arithmetic operators, but the concepts are the same. The way you call the QSort function and the way you write the comparison function is going to differ a little bit depending upon whether you're using a two-dimensional array or an array of strings. Let's look at the two-dimensional array first. Here we've got a two-dimensional array of strings with a width of 10 and a height of 5. We'll call the width the number of columns, and we'll call the height the size of the array. When QSort is working, it's going to point to two of those elements and then ask your comparison function, do these need to be swapped or do they stay where they are? For example, at some point during the sorting, 
A will point to grape and B will point to mango and these will be handed off to our comparison function. Now in this case, A and B are both character pointers because they point to the first letter of each string. They're going to come into our comparison function as void pointers and the first thing we'll need to do is cast them to be the correct thing, which in this case is a character pointer. Here's the comparison function, which I've called alphabetic because it's going to sort the strings into alphabetical order. A and B come into the function as void pointers, and here's the cast to make them character pointers. Since AA A and BB are character pointers, we can just hand them off to string compare because that's already the kind of values that it expects. When we call the QSort function, we still pass in four parameters. The first one is the array to be sorted. The second one is the number of elements in the array. Here it's the size of the array, or five. The third parameter is the width of each element. Here it's a character array of 10 characters. And the fourth parameter is the name of the comparison function. As it's working, QSort will be copying the strings themselves within the array. But when it's done, the array will be sorted from least to greatest. Here's the program I wrote that sorts a two-dimensional array. At the top is our comparison function, along with the cast and the call to string compare. In main, we set up a two-dimensional array with five strings. We call QSort and then print out the array. After running the program, we see that the array is now sorted. Now let's take a look at how to write the comparison function and call QSort for an array of strings. The data structure for an array of strings looks different. Rather than one array that holds all the strings, we have separate arrays for each one of the strings, and then a central parent array that holds pointers to each one of those. So that array is an array of character pointers, because each one of those pointers points to the first character of the string that it's storing. As QSort is working, it's going to point to two of the elements of that array, and then pass those to your comparison function and ask it, are these in the correct order, or do they need to be swapped? A and B are pointers to elements of that parent array. Each one of those is a character pointer, so A and B are character pointer pointers, or char star star. That little detail is going to change the way we write our comparison function and the way we call QSort. When you're using QSort and writing the comparison function, you really have to pay attention to what are the types of things that A and B are pointing to, and then cast them appropriately. In the comparison function, A and B still come in as void pointers, but we know they're actually pointers to character pointers, or char star star, so we have to cast them to character pointer pointers. When we call string compare, we need to dereference each one of them so that it turns them into character pointers, which is what string compare is expecting. Remember, A, A, and B, B are character pointer pointers. Dereferencing them by one level turns them into character pointers. When we call QSort, we're passing in the name of the array we want to sort, the number of elements, and the size of each element. Here, each element is a character pointer, so we're calculating the size of a character pointer. And then finally, we pass in the name of our comparison function. When you're sorting an array of strings, you don't need to move the individual strings around. All you have to do is move the pointers to them. Here's what the picture looks like before. And then after the sort is done, the pointers have been rearranged. Notice the strings themselves haven't moved. Only the pointers have. This potentially makes sorting an array of strings much faster than sorting a two-dimensional array, because we don't have to copy whole strings around. We only have to copy pointers, which are much smaller. To sort an array using QSort, just define your comparison function, and then call QSort with those four parameters, the name of the array, the length of the array, the size of each element of the array, and then the name of that comparison function. And that's it. If your array is small, this will take just a fraction of a second. And if your array is huge, let's say it contains a million items, it'll take just a few moments and it'll sort the whole thing. It's really fast. And once you get used to writing the comparison function and calling QSort, it's really easy to use.